completing the square of part three. In this third section, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, quadratics, solve quadratics that have a uh, coefficient other than one in front of the x squared term. Notice here we have a three in front of the x squared term. Well, we haven't learned to complete the square with anything but a one coefficient in front of the x squared. And actually, we're going to keep to that pattern. But here's how we're going to handle it. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to isolate I'm going to take these two terms, okay, and I'm going to uh, keep these on this side of the equation. Bring the one over to the other side, okay. So what I'm going to do is three x squared minus up oh, squared, sorry, minus two x. Boy, my writing tablet is not doing it. Uh, equals one, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor 3 out of these two terms. You might say, wait a minute, 3 doesn't factor out of these two terms. And it's true that it doesn't. Uh, if I could factor 3 out, it would leave me with 1 here. But I can't. If this isn't like 6 or 3 or 9 or something. This is a 2. But that's only across the integers you can't factor a 3 out. If you do this, this is a neat little trick, by the way. If you can factor a 3 out, OK, we'll have x squared there, and we'll have minus put a 3 under this. And you might say, what's going on here? Well, when I remultiply, I'll get 3x squared. And 3 times negative 2 thirds will give me 2, right? So I'll be right back where I started. And that's what it really means to factor, right? When you distribute, you'll end up right back where you started. So this is kind of a new way of factoring. And now I'm going to say, I'm going to add my magic number. There I am. Put end of parentheses, equals 1. OK plus my magic number. Now I have to find, now I find the magic number in the usual way. I'm completing the square on these two terms. So I take one half of negative two thirds. Okay. I'll do it here. I'm going to take one half of negative two thirds. Okay. And then I'm going to square this quantity. Okay. And this gives me what? Uh, well one half look these twos will cancel out. I'll end up with negative one third squared, won't I? OK, which gives me 1 ninth. So my magic number is 1 ninth. I'm going to put 1 ninth here. And, and I quickly go over, well, I better add 1 ninth to the other side of the equation. But then I say, wait a minute now. Am I really adding 1 ninth to this side? If I redistribute this 3, I'm really adding 3 times 1 ninth, which is 1 third. So I'm really adding 1 third. So I have to add 1 third to this side of the equation to make them equal. And that's a big mistake that people make. They'll just go ahead and put the 1 ninth on the other side. But when you factored out a 3, you have to remember what you do. You're going to have to distribute this 3 eventually in order to get back here. In other words, that's what's implied anyway. And this 3 times 1 ninth is what you've really added to both sides of the equation. I'm going to roll this thing down a bit. So here we are. This is just kind of a little, uh, I'm going to, here's our, here's our what we're doing here. Here's a little interlude when we found our magic number, OK? And we're going to continue on down here, down this side of the board. All right, so now I've got a perfect square trinomial here, right? So I have 3 times x, and it's got to be minus, oops, it's got to be minus, because that term is minus, and then 1 third squared. And this equals, well, 1 third is 3 thirds, right? Plus 1 third equals 4 thirds. OK, so I have 3 times this equals 4 thirds. This, this equals this. So now I've got to divide through by 3. So I want to, I, I want to, because I want to isolate my x minus 1 third squared on one side. So now I have, if I divide both sides by 3, I get x minus 1 third squared equals 4 ninths. I'll give myself a little more blackboard here. And I take the second root of both sides, and I get x minus 1 third equals plus or minus the square root of 4 ninths which equals what? Uh, that's 2 thirds, isn't it? Plus or minus 2 thirds. Oh, that's cool. And then I end up with x equals 1 third plus or minus 2 thirds. Well, this is a pretty easy rational number. I guess I get 1 or uh, negative 1 third. That's a negative there. So those are my solutions. That equals x. That's what x equals, 1 or negative 1 third. 